You are watching the American Conference on ESPN. A beautiful Saturday in New Orleans as we welcome you to Avron B. Fogelman Arena in the Devlin Fieldhouse. It's the non-conference finale for the Tulane Green Wave, who are set to play host to the Grambling State Tigers out of the SWAC. And with that, we say good afternoon alongside David Grubb, Jack Benjamin on hand. Well, if you like defense, you've come to the right place here today. These two have been terrific on that side of the ball in the early going this season. And they do it in different ways. The Grambling State Tigers like to play with their athleticism and their on-ball pressure to create opportunities in the open court, whereas Tulane goes with that matchup zone to make teams very uncomfortable and force them into the shots that they just don't want to take. And if... Grambling wants to solve that two-lane matchup zone today. They'll have to look to Cam Christian, the Boise State transfer, who had a team-high 17 in the win at ULM on Wednesday. He's been their most consistent offensive uh, option this season. Double figures in four out of five games. And in the last two in particular, he's been very hot. 14 points per game, five and a half boards, 11 of 19 shooting overall, five for 10 from three. Speaking of hot, that was Gabe Watson for Tulane against Memphis in their loss on Wednesday. 18 points a season high. Hadn't been a great start for the USM transfer. A lot expected of him, but 18 points in that game against Memphis, as you mentioned. If he can become that consistent third scoring option alongside Jordan Walker and Jalen Forbes, that's a big boost for Tulane. And just about set for tip. So Tulane looking for a 12th straight non-conference home win. Last time they lost in a non-conference home game, December the 1st of 2018 against Southeastern. And meanwhile, Grambling looking for a second straight road win after knocking off ULM on Wednesday. Officials for today, KB Burdett, Bill Jacobson, and Wesley Ford. Terrion Randolph for Grambling, the senior from Dallas against Noble Days, the sophomore from Racine, Wisconsin for Tulane, and the tip controlled by Grambling. And right off the bat, a drive from Prince Moss is swatted away, and here comes Tulane. And there's a look at their starting five. Fourth different starting lineup they have used this season, and Gabe Watson inserted in after his season-high 18-point performance Wednesday against Memphis. Yeah, I think uh, when you look at what Coach Hunter did in changing the starting lineup, you take the freshman, uh, Sion James, you put him on the on the bench and maybe give him an opportunity to get himself going. He's had struggles to get to score so far this season. Watson there shows you that it's carrying over from Wednesday night. Picking up right where he left off. First three games of the season totaled nine points, had 18 against Memphis on Wednesday, including a couple of three-pointers, and it's an early lead for Tulane. They expect a lot out of Watson. You know, he was the leading scorer for Southern Miss last season, 13 points a game. They need that consistent third threat for Tulane. Every team needs, a, uh, you know, some variety in their offense. He can provide that for them. This is Sarion McGee, and he lost it in traffic. Good defense by McGee and company for Tulane. And here come the green wave. Slow starts have been an issue, and a misfire there from Jordan Walker. We talked with Ron Hunter, David, and he said, look, Part of it is just mental. I think a lot of it is mental in, in the sense of execution early. Um, this team has gotten out of what it does well in early parts of games, settling for shots that are a little too deep, not making that extra pass. They're forcing the action. I think what Coach Hunter wants is this team to let the game come to them early. Tulane had to dig out of a 24-7 deficit in their American Conference opener on Wednesday against Memphis. Battled back to trail by just one at the half before falling by six. Meanwhile, this Grambling team, 2-3 and three coming in, but they have played a whale of a schedule already. And a dump-off feed there from Cunningham through the hands of McGee. And a turnover there on Grambling. It's a team where, you know, we talked with Dante Jackson, Dave, and he says, we wanted to be battle-tested early. You go to Tucson and play Arizona, and you go play the number 14 team in the country in Lubbock and Texas Tech. That prepares you for an environment like this. Absolutely. And when you go into your conference schedule, they want to contend for a SWAC championship this year. That's something they have a regular season title already in the last few years. They want to get to the, the, the NCAA tournament, something they've never done in program history. Challenging yourself, playing up is a great way to do that. Offensive rebound for Tulane. We're two minutes in, and it's 3-0. Off the screen. This is McGee, and he's off the mark. RJ's been such a great player for them early on, providing a lot of energy, versatility, going to the basket, hit a couple of threes. That just wasn't his shot there. Sarion McGee, the 6'8", 255 center, and the kick out, well done. That's Prince Moss knocking one down. 
He's one of their better three-point shooters around 33%, and we're tied up. On a team that struggles to shoot threes, they're going to be very important this afternoon, particularly against this matchup zone that forces teams to take maybe some rougher looks. So that's a, a, a very good sign for Grambling in the early going. Yeah, Grambling, as you mentioned, 25% from three coming in, one of the worst marks in the entire country. They're in the bottom 50 nationally. Tulane not much better, though. No. Yeah, Tulane hovering right around 26% as well, second worst in the American. Jalen Forbes corner triple. You bet. Now, and he has been consistent. Sign. Yes, Forbes has been the one of the, the consistent threats from outside. There aren't many on this Tulane team, but he's definitely been the, the leader. Three for 13 against Memphis Wednesday, but gets going right away here. Asking Ron Hunter about Forbes. He's been so impressed with his patience, his shot selection. Even in that game against Memphis, a lot of good looks that he just missed. A misfire from Cam Christian, who he spotlighted in the open. Boise State transfer has been a welcome addition to this Grambling State team. Forbes again, not that time. And Prince Moss has the rebound. The ball movement was solid there. I think uh, Forbes could have taken a, a pump fake and maybe gotten to the rim on that one. So Grambling one of three to start with a couple of turnovers. Playing their fifth road non-conference game already. Christian. And he knocks down a triple. And you saw, compared to the last shot that he took from the corner, his feet were set. He got his release in motion rather than trying to rush it. A very good-looking shot for Christian. Redshirt Jr. from Allen, Texas, came in shooting just 23% from three. Four minutes gone, opening half. Jordan Walker off the screen. Another offensive rebound for McGee. And Watson will reset it. Wants the day's screen. It's a long and rangy grambling team, a lot of length. Here's Days with a corner triple, and he puts it in. So how about Days knocking one down? That's his first three-pointer of the season. He's now 5 for 19 in his career, David. You don't expect that from him. He's much more of a multi-purpose kind of uh, poor man. It's Draymond Green uh, shoots the three about as well, maybe, as Draymond, but that's a big shot for him. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Grambling. So we've got 15 points on the board all through the three ball. Three-point two-lane lead early here in New Orleans. Three-point lead early for Tulane on Grambling with David Grubb, Jack Benjamin back with you. And, well, David, we look at the keys for today's game. A big one would be getting out and running if you're Grambling, and they've done that in the early going here. That they have. They are quick, they are athletic, and they use, to use their defense to create easy opportunities on offense. They have to get out and run. They also want to control the inside. They have a couple of players who they feel like can get some points in the paint and dominate the glass for them. And Tulane talked about setting the tone with a good early start. Maybe not a great start if you're Ron Hunter, but I think he'll take an early lead comparatively to what happened Wednesday against Memphis. They haven't turned the ball over so far, you know, uh, uh, and they've made their shots from outside. They haven't taken bad shots. Those are all important things for Tulane in the early going. So no middle mistakes, and like you said, a three-point lead here early. Let's hope they can cont continue that over the next few minutes. So 9-6 Tulane early. Just about five gone in this opening half. Second meeting all time between these two. They matched up in 2008. It was about a 40-point win for Tulane. Again, final non-conference game for the Green Wave. Final non-conference road game for Grambling with the shot clock all the way down. A misfire from Cunningham. And Tulane's done a nice job of making it one and done early on. That's something that they've been consistent at this season is forcing teams to take shots within the last five seconds of the shot clock. That means that those shots are rushed and generally not in great places. Tough shot from McGee. That's something that Sarion McGee does so well. 6'8 redshirt sophomore from Milwaukee. Alters tons of shots. Here's Prince Moss, another triple, and he's got a second. So Moss knocks one down. Grambling is three for four from distance, and we're tied up at nine. Great form there in the corner. Great confidence as well. His release is quick and pure. Moss, a redshirt, sophomore, redshirt senior from Bessemer, Alabama. Transferred in from Iowa Central Community College. He's one of six transfers in terms of newcomers this season. Here's McGee against Christian. And now Noble Days, mid-range. Nicely done. He is very comfortable at the free throw line in that area extended, either as a shooter or a passer. 
Scoreless in 14 minutes against Memphis. Had a season high eight against Pine Bluff in the previous timeout. So both teams living on the perimeter here early. And you can look inside, you see Day's first challenging inside and then running out to defend the three. Uh, how just about doesn't Moss? Get there. He's feeling it. Third triple already. He's got nine. And Grambling has its first lead of the game at 12-11. So now you've got the confidence. You're taking a punch if you're Tulane on your home court. How do you respond? And they need a, a good possession here where they get the ball moving and create a good shot. Jordan Walker three, and he answers right back. So it's a three-point and perimeter show early, and back and forth we go. If we had had a bet, this would be the most unlikely of the starts considering the way that these teams <laughs> shoot from the outside, but it's been exciting. The two teams combined, as you said, David, they came in 25.5% from three combined. Inside, McGee, well done. Off a nice feed, and McGee has a second field goal. He had a season-high 16 against ULM on the road Wednesday. A guy who had really not done much in the early part of the season. He was 6-for-6 six six from the floor. And that's where they want to go inside. They want to create those opportunities in the paint. He's got bulk, and he's got some soft touch. Tied up at 14, and a good one early. Forbes triple. Not that time. Offensive rebound, McGee. And he was looking for a whistle, didn't get it. Got to play through it, but yeah, he had a chance at the whistle, but I, I think that's one where you want to reset. McGee thinks plays bigger than he is, but in that situation, resetting the offense might have been the best decision he could have made. Cunningham on the skip, and the three-pointer rims out for Christian. Subs are getting set to check in at the next dead ball. Both teams look a little gassed here early. Triple try. Watson, you bet. So Tulane on fire from three. They're five for nine. Grambling is four for six. And it's a three-point shootout here early at Fogelman in Devlin. Now the danger is if you fall too much in love with the three and stop running your offense, uh, that can come back and haunt you because that math is going to play against you at some point. Prince Moss misses a rare mid-range here from Grambling in the early going and running away with it is Walker. Bounce feed McGee, swatted off the glass by Moss, but a foul. And that will take us to our under-12 timeout. Three-point shootout early here in New Orleans. Tulane by three over a feisty Grambling team. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Nice little soft putback, though. Tulane up three early on Grambling and off to a 4-1 and one start this season. A big reason why has been a couple of their Ironmen, these two guards in terms of Jordan Walker and Jalen Forbes. You can see those two, David, are rarely off the court, and when they're on the court, they're very effective. Well, you have a very inexperienced Tulane team. You have to be able to count on a couple of people. With Jordan Walker, he was the main returnee coming back. They've relied on him to, to step up as the point guard this season. He's shown that that faith has been placed in, a, in the right guy. And then you look at uh, uh, I'm sorry, Forbes, and he's just been their most consistent scorer throughout this season. His, also, his length gives teams a lot of trouble defensively. Out of the timeout, R.J. McGee, sophomore from Chicago, is at the line. He misfires on the first free throw. Came in as one of the better free throw shooters for Tulane at 75%. Couple of subs have come on for each team. Into the game for the first time for Grambling is Brian Thomas, 6'9", senior from Kennesaw, Georgia. And a couple are getting ready to come on for Tulane as well, including Sion James, who had started the previous three games, freshman from Sugar Hill, Georgia, has come on. Along with Tylen Pope, redshirt freshman from Franklinton, Louisiana. Pope's been one of those kids. He had a double-double in, in the first game of the season, um, but has struggled to find consistency, particularly on the offensive end. And defensively, he's gotten himself into foul trouble a couple of times. He has a lot of talent. I, I really want to see if this is a game where he can break out. 
Now, if you're just joining us, four-point Tulane lead on Grambling. Final non-conference game for the Green Wave. A misfire there from Kelton Edwards and rebounded by Gabe Watson. The two teams combined so far in this game, nine for 15 from three and now two for 10 from two-point range. Sion Edwards to Kevin Cross, who comes off the bench today after starting the previous three. Forbes off the pump. A good look from two. Pope battling, and he knocks down Christian, and he just whistled for a foul. Yeah, with both James and Cross, guys who had started for most of the season, again, I think Ron Hunter here, he talked about trying to get change up the lineup, change up the mentality of his team in breaking up these slow starts. These two guys were guys who struggled to get their offense going and got into foul trouble in a couple of games very early. Maybe coming off the bench will change their attitude, their perception of the game, and their ability to contribute. Saw so Dante Jackson there, the fourth-year head coach of this team, and there is a 10-second violation. So Grambling having trouble dealing with the pressure there. Dante Jackson, fourth year, 53-49 and 49 overall record. In his first season, he was hired in June 2017. His first season, he took Grambling to their first regular season title in 30 years. They went 13-5 and five in conference play. He was the SWAC coach of the year. They unfortunately didn't get to play in the postseason due to some academic issues, but he has this team going in the right direction. And that's... Grambling is a historic program, not just football, but in the HBCU, the collegiate um, athletics world. When they're doing well, this is a national brand. This is a brand that everyone knows. And I think bringing some basketball um, consistency back to Grambling, Louisiana, is something that would be great for the state of Louisiana. Tylen Pope scores. Redshirt freshman from Franklinton had been scoreless in his last couple of games coming in. Six-point lead for Tulane is their largest in this opening half. And... There's a whistle away from the ball. Ron Hunter not too pleased. Looks like it's on Kevin Cross. So Ron Hunter now second season. An eight win improvement last year, 12 and 18. And has talked about his team and really talking about that Memphis game, David, asking him about it. He said, look, everything except the win in terms of showing up on the national stage playing hard battling back from an early deficit there's an offensive foul he was very impressed with his group and now it's a matter of with a young team trying to finish against a very good group like memphis it's not only the finish but like you talked about those starts a big difference for tulane they average about 29 a game in the first half 38 in the second half and when you have to close out these games, turnovers, these mental mistakes that we see out of Tulane from time to time, things that kill runs, are the things that you get out of a young team, an inexperienced team, a team with nine new players on board. So Coach Hunter has done a good job in, in getting them to compete at the very least on a consistent basis. Shot clock deep again for Tulane under the midway point of this first half. Jalen Forbes drills one. So Forbes has gotten off to a nice start here. He's got five, and Tulane has built an eight-point lead. Varying his game there. He just doesn't have to stand outside by the arc. He can get inside. Kelton Edwards, and that's what this scrambling team does. They will come right back at you every time. Edwards, a guy who's made a couple starts this year, senior out of Dallas, only averaging four a game. Kevin Cross had it poked away and nearly saved on the baseline by Brian Thomas, but he stepped out. A lot of indecision for Tulane against that press. Uh, you saw Sign James had the opportunity to bring it up court. He slowed down, and then you get it to Cross, who's not a great ball handler, and he gets the ball knocked out from behind. They have to be more aware in these half-court situations, particularly when Grambling is applying pressure. Jordan Walker runs to the scorer's table to check back in. You've got the extra complication these days with having to remove your mask and make sure it comes off before you come onto the court. So he replaces Gabe Watson. Out there with Days, Forbes, Pope and cross and there's a drive by cross and he got hit nearly finished through the contact from thomas and a couple of free throws upcoming from kevin cross who had a nice game against memphis wednesday 12 points in his 23 minutes due to foul trouble again yeah, foul trouble's been his biggest issue that along with shot selection right there he could have taken a mid-range jumper instead, puts the ball on the ground, two quick dribbles, and attacks the basket. Now he's going to go to the free throw line for the, you know, just the second set of free throw attempts for Tulane in this game. 
Sophomore from Little Rock, misfires on the first. You know, Tulane's been a very good free throw shooting team this year, 77%. They've missed a couple already here today. Cross transferred in from Nebraska, spent a year there in Lincoln, averaged seven points and three rebounds last year, and it didn't play a whole lot toward the stretch run of the season. He's a native of Little Rock, so he's at least a little closer to home here, but uh, one thing he can certainly do is block shots. He's done a, done a nice job being a presence, even though he's a little undersized at times at 6'8". Very athletic, um, has a, co a great combination of skills. The, the highlights for him came in the Big Ten tournament last year, but he has to prove that he can make better decisions, that he can stay on the floor. Foul trouble, as you said, a consistent problem for him. Grambling a little out of control. That's off the hands of Rayon Cobb. And another turnover for the Tigers. That's now seven in the opening half, and that's been the story for them. Five bigger pardon. Julian has to turn those into points. That's something Tulane's done very well, averaging Absolutely. about 16 points off turnovers per game this season. So seven-point lead for the Green Wave. Under the nine-minute mark of this opening half now. Hope a good catch on the sideline. This is Cross with a three. I just, I, I, I don't want to see Cross shoot that shot. It, it has not gone down for him this season. He, there are better looks, and they will be available within the shot clock. Forbes had it knocked away. Pope tried to go up and under, had it swatted by a combination, including Brian Thomas. Up ahead now to Moss, back out Edwards. And they'll reset it. Moss has already hit a couple of threes. Nearly got that one to go, and he was fouled. And there's the last thing you want to do, and, and that's really been the problem for Cross. Bad fouls at bad times. You never want to foul a shooter, especially a three-point shooter. That's yeah, a second personal foul in three minutes. A lack of discipline there. And then on the other side, before that, leading to that shot is Pope way outside the lane. He's not long. He's not particularly tall. And he tries to extend himself past two men to score. So bad decisions are both in for Tulane. They're still hanging on to the seven-point lead, though. Prince Moss at the line for three. And he misses on that first one. Mentioned redshirt senior out of Bessemer, Alabama. Iowa Central Community College transfer. He's actually the player who's been with this Grambling program the longest, four years. He's been here every year with Dante Jackson after spending one year in Fort Dodge, Iowa. And he's gotten better and better at 11 points against ULM on Wednesday. He's probably the most athletic player on this roster, and we've seen that early on from him. And he's extremely confident. Came in with five made threes, and he's already got three tonight. He's three for three from distance. So he goes two of three at the line, and he'll check out, and Christian comes back in. So the lead for Tulane is five. Also in from Michael Moton, sophomore from Shreveport for Grambling. And now some full court pressure applied by the Tigers. McGee finds Walker. Do not be surprised if Coleman, the next time it comes in, he lets it fly. Yeah, freshman from Madison has been the best three point shooter for Tulane by percentage this season. Right around 36%. Shot clock toward 10. McGee triple. That one's good. So RJ McGee welcomes sight there. He knocks down his first triple, and Tulane has built an eight-point lead. McGee is such a valuable part of this team. He provides a little bit of everything. When he's on the court, good things happen for the Green Wave. Sophomore out of Chicago. Pull up by Edwards. That's well done over the top of McGee and Kelton Edwards. The senior from Dallas, whose numbers have gone down a little bit these last couple years, has another field goal. Walker transition triple. And Christian, who's a very good rebounder at six foot six, rips that one away from the contending Pope. And it's about both teams making the other do what they want to do. Grambling wants to force Tulane to take shots very quickly. What Tulane wants is for Grambling to hold on to that basketball. As you can see, we're already under 15 seconds on the shot clock. Who's going to impose their will throughout this game? And there's a reach-in foul called. So this will take us to our under eight. 6.44 to play first half. 
back and forth we go. Six point lead for Tulane. Back in New Orleans, six point lead for Tulane on Grambling. So there's a look at fourth year head coach Dante Jackson of the Grambling State Tigers. He is a Milwaukee native and he's playing against a guy in Ron Hunter who was someone he looked up to growing up. Uh, Dante being from Milwaukee was always around that area and Ron, you might recall, starting his coaching career as an assistant at the University of Milwaukee, six years there to get his career started. The two were very close. Actually, the uncle of Dante, Nelson Boulder, was the academic advisor for Milwaukee at the time, so he'd always hang out around the program. The two got to know each other. And David, the first call he made when he got his initial couple of coaching jobs was to Ron Hunter just to pick his brain and figure out, hey, how can I get better as a coach? As a nice finish inside for Rayon Cobb. Hunter's a great resource for a coach like Dante Jackson. Knows what it's like to build up a small college program. Knows what it's like to go after transfers and recruit those players that maybe are, are undiscovered gems. And also knowing what to do with limited resources um, to, to make it happen. So, yeah, if you're talking about a guy in Ron Hunter who's almost got 500 wins as a head coach, there aren't many guys better to talk to at this level about how to get yourself into position to be a winning, consistent program. Difficult shot for Gabe Watson, and he gets that one to go, and Tulane is back up six. Yeah, you know, Tante was joking around with us saying, look, normally I'm going into a game like this against a Tulane team with a very tough zone. I'd be picking Ron's brain on how to handle it. Instead, he's the guy I'm going up against on the sideline today. Right, and they've, I mean, Coach Hunter recruited him all the way back when he was an eighth grader, knew him then. Um, so that relationship is so close, and we see that throughout the college coaching fraternity. It's, it's something that I think is very special when you build those kinds of relationships where you have a veteran guiding a younger coach. Meanwhile, he's not liking what he's seeing right now from this Tulane offense. The shooting has been incredible. They're now 7 for 13 from 3 after Jalen Forbes cans his second triple of the half. He's got 8, and Tulane seemingly can't miss right now as they've built the nine-point lead in a timeout. <laughs> we talked about defense at the start of this broadcast, and neither team has been able to stop the other really from shooting the basketball. It's the turnovers, as you said, for Grambling uh, have just been the thing that's, that's hurt them the most, and then they haven't gotten to the free throw line a lot either. Uh, so it, it, it's just a, it's a surprising start, but for Tulane to be thir have 31 points with five minutes remaining in the first half is definitely an accomplishment considering where they've started for most of this season. Now, the three-point shooting is certainly a story for both teams. Here's a big one for you, too, David. Grambling is shooting 50% from the floor, but they've only attempted 16 shots. And as we've talked about, the turnovers have just killed them. It's out of the timeout, down by nine. Do they have a response here before the break? That won't help the cause. That's off the leg of Rayon Cobb, who's struggled since checking in. And he will very quickly go back to the bench as Prince Moss comes on. And Ron Hunter fired up with his defense, which has forced six turnovers now. Tulane yet to give it away. And both of Cobb's turnovers there were unforced. One off his leg on the, uh, in the dunk spot against the zone, and then one there right again off his leg trying to put the ball on the floor at the top of the key. We hit the five-minute mark of the opening half. Nine-point Tulane advantage. Gabe Watson. And a moving screen. It's an offensive foul against Days. Yeah, he stuck the shoulder out there uh, on the screen. And Watson could have done a better job in setting that screen up. Uh, just a, a poor communication, poor execution. There. So Sarion McGee comes back in. As much as Grambling has been perimeter-oriented today, even more so with him having to sit with an early foul. Under five to go, opening half. Again, non-conference finale here for Tulane before going back into American play, starting on Tuesday at East Carolina in a tough pull-up. Kelton Edwards, he's a tough shot maker. Good-looking player, senior out of Dallas. Not a lot of height, but he's been able to get shots in the mid-range. All three of his baskets have come in that area. I like his aggressiveness. Spent two years at Marshalltown Community College in Iowa and filled it up there, averaged about 15 a game over a couple years. Late clock again for Tulane. It's now a zone look from Grambling. Watson, Days, skip it over to Ford for a three again. Jalen Forbes is heating up. 
He's got 11 and three first half triples, and the lead is double digits for the first time. And give a lot of credit to Noble Days to catch that ball just below the block and see his man deliver a great pass so the shot goes in rhythm. Edwards, tough fall away, and that's well contested by Forbes. And Days there with the rebound again. This is a guy who, who just does the little things. They find Forbes again. Hot hands. Why not? Jalen Forbes. The exact same spot as the last one. He's feeling it. On fire in this opening half. 14 first half points from the sophomore from Florence, Mississippi. Tulane by 13. Cam and the Patriots. Monday Night Football on ESPN and ABC. Fourteen first half points for Jalen Forbes. Thirteen point lead for Tulane. The ball movement, David, has been spectacular. Yeah, for Tulane, twelve assists on your thirteen made baskets. Moving the ball has been critical. They have not turned the ball over. Just one turnover for the Waves so far. And then to add on top of that, thirty-seven points with three thirty remaining. This is their best scoring first half of the season and their third highest scoring half of the year as well. So a first half outburst for Tulane here at home. Prince Moss trying to answer, and that stops a 6-0 run. Much needed basket there for Grambling, and Moss has really done the scoring for Grambling in the first half. He's got 14. And still perfect from deep. Four for four now for him from three-point range. He's already got a season high. Three to play opening half. What's been an entertaining back-and-forth offensive show. We came on the air talking about defense, and you know, pretty quickly we... We're made to look the complete opposite of what we were discussing. And the big change, that the lineup change that Coach Hunter made is paying off. You're seeing the, the impact of a noble days. You're seeing Gabe Watson with eight points already here in the first half. So that change, that subtle change has done a great job in, in getting Tulane off to a great start. Finally a miss from three for Tulane. Had made three of four. Prince Moss again, that's a difficult pull-up. And Jalen Forbes wants to push. McGee on the outlet, taking on contact. Walker, extra feed, Watson. Yep, another one goes down. Tulane rolling. Watson's got a third three. He's in the double digits. And again, the lead 13. Good decision. McGee saw that the shot wasn't there, passed it back out. The extra pass to Watson allows him to step into the three cleanly and splash that one. Tulane came in averaging 12 assists per game. You saw that on the graphic. 13 assists, 14 made field goals. Tough scoop from Cunningham. Offensive rebound, McGee empowers it up and in. He has such soft hands. The two baskets he scored have just come off of uh, these kinds of plays. If he can stay on the floor, some foul trouble was his problem a little bit earlier. Let's see if he can stay on the floor and make something happen. Comes over from State Fair Community College in Missouri. Started his career at UW-Whitewater. Walker down the lane, tough angle. He had Cunningham on his hip, but he misfired. And Grambling again trying to get within single digits with 75 seconds to go in the half. Edwards down the lane, offensive foul. And Day's in some pain after taking the hit. He was Tulane's team leader in charges taken last year. He's their team leader in charges taken this year. He is willing to lay his body on the line for his team, but he's feeling that one. He mentioned it, 27 charges taken last year as he shakes that one off. So, Sion James comes on for Tulane. Out there with Walker, Watson, and Forbes in the backcourt, and then Days, the lone big, stays on after taking that shot. 11-point Tulane late as we close in on a minute to go. A whole lot of offensive firepower on display here today from two teams that came in struggling shooting the ball. No rebounding there. If Days is going to shoot that jump shot, someone else has to come down and box out. Prince Moss, 22 in gold, has been the guy for Grambling in the opening half. 14 points. Cam Christian, their leading scorer, has yet to get it going. He's now one for five from the floor. They need him. Yeah, we've not called his name much on either end of the floor. Watson off balance. And Cunningham, their senior point guard, wants to push. 
Tough pass there taken away by Walker, and Ron Hunter says, hey, let's slow this down and call timeout. So 21.3, they can now hold for a final shot. He's barking something at Gabe Watson, maybe about that last shot selection. Absolutely. That's usually what he gets, uh, where he gets infuriated with his offense is their shot selection. Now you've got 21 seconds. You want to work this down for the last shot. I don't think what you want is a three here unless you're getting it off of that ball movement that we've seen. Penetrate first. That's what Grambling has said that they wanted to stop. Keep Tulane's guards out of the lane. What we've seen is when Tulane has been able to get to the paint and make that second pass, that's when the open shots have come. So if you can get Watson, if you can get uh, Forbes on one of those, that's the second shot. But let's look inside first if you're Tulane. Try to get a high screen and roll and get uh, moving towards the lane. You see Coleman coming in now. He's definitely going to be a three-point threat. It seems that they're bringing in Cross as well, a guy who will shoot it, but mostly I think he's there to set a screen. So Forbes to inbound, Walker with him in the backcourt, and then, as David mentioned, Watson, Coleman, and cross the five. So you, you have five capable three-point threats out there. So I think you're going to see the screen come in the next second or so. Walker running it down under 10. Here's the screen from Forbes. Walker outside, extra pass. Coleman for three. No, a rare miss in the first half from the Green Wave. They finish up from three, 10 for 18, and they'll take an 11-point lead to the break. And they, they, they came up just as they drew it up uh, there with that pass and then getting the shot. Tulane really hot in the first half. Let's see if it continues in the second. Tulane, 13 assists on 14 made field goals. Double-digit lead on Grambling at the break. Here in the crowd. And the Bills, Cam and the Patriots. Monday Night Football on ESPN and ABC. Halftime in New Orleans. Tulane up 11 at home on Grambling in their non-conference finale with David Grubb, Jack Benjamin back with you. Impressive first half all around from Tulane offensively. And boy, do they shoot the lights out in those opening 20 minutes. A look at those first half numbers. And one thing you don't see there is uh, the three-point field goals, but 13 assists on 14 mid-field goals, David, pretty darn good. Yeah, and, and 10 of those made field goals being three-pointers which is just not something we expected out of Tulane today. Uh, they have hit on all of the keys to the game that we talked about earlier. Tulane's just been fantastic in the areas that they wanted to be. They have not turned the ball over. They're not in, in foul trouble. They didn't send Grambling to the line. They didn't take a ton of bad shots. They're shooting nearly 50% from the floor, and they set the tone with that first half. Their 40 points being the highest total that they've had in a first half this season. So just a great, great 20 minutes there for the Green Wave. If you're grambling, you have to feel decent about the way you played offensively. The issue being, of course, those eight giveaways, and that led to the Tigers taking eight fewer shots. So, again, halftime lead is 11 for Tulane. We'll come back and check out some of the highlights from that opening half after this. Tulane looking good through 20 minutes here at home in their non-conference finale. Back inside Averin B. Fogelman Arena in the Devlin Fieldhouse. Tulane 40, Grambling 29, non-conference. Home finale here for Tulane. A look at those first half highlights. Tulane up 11, but Grambling got off to a nice start shooting the ball. And boy, without Prince Moss, David, I don't know where they would be in that opening half. He had 14 and knocked down all four of his triples. Yeah, he was their only consistent offensive threat uh, for most of the first half. Showed a lot of confidence with his three, did uh, get to the basket, and even his uh, free throw attempts came off of a missed three uh, where he was fouled. He shot that, particularly on that right side, either from the wing or in that corner. He was the offense for Grambling State in that first half. He got going in a big way and got a little help from Kelton Edwards as well. Six points for the senior from Dallas on three for six shooting, but it was all about Tulane and the ball movement. 13 assists, 14 made field goals, and of course they knocked down 10 threes. Yeah, and you watch the way that they passed the ball. They were looking for each other. They were actively seeking out the open shooter against this Grambling defense, which led to them not turning that ball over. Look at 
each time, it's the second pass. It's not one pass and a shot. There's a reaction and then a second pass. The drive that Grambling wanted to stop in the first half, they couldn't. Here's R.J. McGee here. One pass. Gabe Watson steps in. Splash. That was too late in the first half. Watson 11 points on three for five from three-point range. And it was the Jalen Forbes show. Four three-pointers tying his career high and 14 first-half points for the sophomore. So Tulane begins with the ball to start the second half. 11-point lead. Again, trying to close out their non-conference slate 5-0 and and get to 5-1 and before resuming American Conference play at East Carolina on Tuesday. Grambling looking for a second straight road win off that win at ULM Wednesday. And a tough pull up there from Watson. Almost corralled by Days, but taken in by Prince Moss. So same five who started each way. If you're Dante Jackson, what did you tell your Grambling team at halftime, David? Well, the first thing they have to do is pick it up defensively. They cannot allow Tulane to get these easy looks. Their rotations have to be better. Uh, enforcing Tulane off of that three-point line. And then the second thing is, got to take care of the basketball. Guys, we cannot have live ball turnovers. You can't have mistake uh, mistakes where you just have the ball dribble off of your foot. They just have to be better and, and clean themselves up because, like you said, they've been shooting the ball well. It's just that they haven't had the opportunities to take shots because they've shot themselves in the foot so often. Nice cut there by Kelton Edwards, and Grambling gets on the board on their first offensive set of this second half. And for Tulane, it's are they going to be complacent in the second half? They had so much success in the first half. Do they start settling for threes instead of creating them off of the ball movement? Shot clock down to one, and there's a shot clock violation right on cue. And Ron Hunter, rightfully so, is beside himself. A look there at the second-year head man of this program. Talked about it in the open, but 461 wins. His 27th year as a college coach. He's seen a lot of things, but he has never had a team this young, and that's the challenge he faces with this Tulane group. And a lot of these schools where you look at it, when you're trying to rebuild a program, the reason you got there is because there wasn't a lot of leadership. There, Tulane giving up that middle where Grambling said they wanted to attack. Terion Randolph, senior out of Dallas, dunks one down. It's four quick ones for Grambling to start the second. Back to within seven. Wide open, Watson triple, you bet. And Tulane continues where they left off in that first half. And Watson has a 4-3 pointer. He's got 14. Grandley just has to do a better job of picking up these shooters. Uh, they are doing a great job inside, outscoring Tulane 10-2 in the paint. But you're not going to get back in this game if you can't keep Tulane from getting clean looks at the three. This is Travell Cunningham, their senior point guard. Outside, Moss knocked down all four of his threes in the first, and his first miss, and here comes Tulane. Watson wants to push the pace, mid-range, got it. Well done by Gabe Watson, and how about the rhythm he's had these last couple games, David? 18 Wednesday, 16 more tonight. Yeah, it makes you kind of believe that maybe those lingering effects, he did suffer a concussion in the team's opener, took a, a tough shot to the face, missed the game uh, due to those protocols. It seems as if these last two games he's gotten out of that funk, uh, gotten himself back into the flow of basketball. Reaching foul there on Forbes. We've talked about Watson, the Southern Miss transfer, had that breakout season last year in Hattiesburg, 13 points per. But he only shot the ball in his couple of years at Southern Miss, 30% from three-point range. Ron Hunter has worked with him on shot selection, taking what the defense has given him. He's done that these last couple of games. Absolutely. That's a lot of leadership to understand when to take shots, to understand when to create for others. And that is going to be the difference for Tulane. With he and Jordan Walker on the floor together, they're both able to make decisions and buckets. Uh, so that's an important weapon to have in a guard-oriented game. That's a beautiful dish from Cunningham down low to Moss, who's got 16 to match Watson for a game high. And Grambling hanging around courtesy of their redshirt senior from Bessemer, Alabama. And you can see that what Grambling is doing is looking for the soft spot in the back of the zone. And throughout this season, Tulane has had opportunities, uh, excuse me, uh, breakdowns defensively where they've allowed teams to get on that baseline and score. Watson, no on the floater, rebound tipped a couple times and corralled by Cam Christian, and Grambling wants to push up top. It was a pass that went off the backboard. Here comes Tulane. Watson, Jordan, Walker, three, another one. And Tulane simply cannot miss today. 
points off of turnovers, live ball, and then again, another open three for Tulane. That's just been the recipe today for them. A season high 12 three pointers on 21 tries for a team that came in at 26% from distance. What a clinic it's been on the offensive end. 15 assists, 17 made field goals. Cam Christian answers back. He's been quiet. We didn't say his name a whole lot in that first half, David. Their leading scorer coming in. He's going to have to try to vary it up. He has not attacked the basket particularly well. Uh, been shooting the ball from distance. He's going to have to find a way to get himself to the free throw line. Hope Maybe that shot is the one that gets him going, though. Walker misfires. And rebound kept alive by Terion Randolph. One-shot possessions are not going to do it for Tulane if they want to maintain this, we this lead. Every time Tulane looks like it's pulling away, Grambling comes right back with an answer. They're down 10. Cam Christian again. Yup, he's got back-to-back -back threes. Grambling all of a sudden heating up in this second half. They're 7 for 12 from distance, and they're back within 7 points. Without those turnovers, this is a much tighter game. And at seven, it's probably already a little too uncomfortable for Tulane. Jalen Forbes led the way for, two, for Tulane with 14 in the first half. And there's a travel called on Sion James. And only the third turnover on Tulane in this game. Seven-point lead for the Green Wave. Grambling not going away. Back and forth we go here in New Orleans. Six-zero Grambling run to get back within seven of Tulane. They were once down by 13 moments ago. David Grubb, Jack Benjamin, back with you. And as we revisit the keys we talked about early on, David Grambling doing a nice job in the paint. 14 points. Tulane is just two. Yeah, and that sparked this run. Tulane be, uh, being unable to stop Grambling from getting some layups around the basket. In turn, that's opened up the outside for Grambling. Some of those other numbers, Tulane, 15 assists on 17 field goals and limiting grambling and transition. But Tulane, meanwhile, one turnover in the first half, already two here in the second. And both leading to baskets for grambling, so that makes it even worse. It's one thing to turn it over, but there were live ball situations that ended up leading to three-pointers. If you're just joining us, Tulane at 4-1, and one, grambling 2-3. and three. Tulane comes off a loss in their American Conference opener Wednesday against a very good Memphis team, whereas... Grambling beat ULM on the road on Wednesday. Cam Christian to the basket. He draws some contact, and he'll go to the line. Can cut this to a five-point deficit with a couple of free throws. Tulane has led by as many as 13 in this game. The margin was 11 at the half, and Grambling trying to add to a 6-0 run. With all the three-pointers, we haven't seen a lot of free throws. This will just be the fourth and fifth attempts for Grambling in this game. But for Christian, we just talked about him. Two threes and now attacking the basket. He was pretty silent in the first half. Now he's making his presence felt. Had three points at halftime. He's already up to 10. So seven quick ones. Redshirt junior from Allen, Texas, spent a year at Boise State to start his career. He actually was ready to play as a sophomore, broke his nose in preseason, decided he needed a new home, and well, he ended up talking to a couple different people around the country thinking, hey, where can I go to play school? It happens to be that his dad, TC, was an all-conference football player at Grambling. Got, in, got to, in touch with Dante Jackson, who said, hey, we'll take him over here. And sure enough, it's been a great fit as their leading scorer, and he's got them back within five. Yeah, Coach Jackson definitely trying to uh, stockpile some talent for his team. He's found a good win in Christian. And Ron Hunter's got a good one in Jalen Forbes. Another basket for the outstanding sophomore who's up to 16. So that stops the 8-0 run. It's a 7-point Tulane lead. Again, their non-conference finale, two on the road to continue American play starting Tuesday in Greenville against East Carolina. And a tough backdoor pass that time from Randolph. I was about to say Grambling's done a nice job of not giving the ball away to start the second half. Yeah, that was a, a, a just an attempt of, of two guys too close to each other in the offense. But look at the hands there for Grambling out on the perimeter. This is what they want to do. Tough shot, it goes for James, plus a foul. Sion James banging off bodies and using all of that 6-5, 205 frame for two. If this young man can put it together, he has all the physical tools that you want out of a combination guard. He's a guy who can handle the ball. He has great quickness. And as you look at that body, that is not a freshman's build. 
but he's just struggled to, with his confidence and his consistency in either taking it to the basket or and finishing or pulling up for those jump shots. He made a mental mistake just a couple minutes ago. Now he's going to the line for a three-point play. There's no question the talent is there. 6A co-player of the year in Georgia last year, led his team to the state championship game. He had 11 in the second game of the year against Lipscomb, has struggled since. And it's been tough for Ron Hunter. He's talked about how talented he is, and he wants to have it all, but you have to stay the course, especially in an unprecedented year like this. And for a freshman, I think it's find one thing that you know you can do every night. Find a way to contribute. The first thing to do is play solid defense. The second thing to do is get yourself into favorable offensive opportunities. And you see James right there. That's the struggle of a freshman making a foul right there in a situation where he didn't have to. Reaches in against Sarion McGee who had post position. And he picks up his first foul. So Kelton Edwards will inbound it for Grambling, who have made their last three shots. They're five for six to begin this second half. Edwards against McGee. Difficult shot. Got it to go. And All he's in the double figures. <laughs> All of Edwards' shots have been difficult shots, it seems. He's just a very skilled shot maker. Ten points for Edwards. Grambling continues to hang around, down by eight. James kicks it out. McGee triple. He got it to go. And that's a great rhythm shot. The pass was right in the shooting pocket for McGee. He gets it up in perfect rhythm. And... Uh, that's, a, that's just an excellent possession for Tulane. Hasn't taken many threes this year. He's two for three today. And there's a takeaway. Bad pass from Moss. Yep. Forbes passed up the three. Mid-range. Yep. Jalen Forbes is in some kind of zone. 18 points for the sophomore out of Florence, Mississippi. And the lead back to its largest for Tulane at 13. And what you like most about Forbes' game is the balance. He's been able to make the three. He's also been able to finish it in, uh, in the mid-range. Moss glides to the rim. Boy, those long strides. We were talking about how athletic he is. That looked like Giannis Antetokounmpo there. Yeah, it seems like he extended as soon as he took off from the ground. His hands were already at the rim. Watson pull up. A miss. So there's James. There's that athletic frame grabbing that offensive rebound amongst the trees, and he'll go to the line for a couple. Don't have to write a play for that. That's just hustle and being in the right spot, getting the offensive glass, and going to the free throw line. Tulane needs to start making those free throws. They're only three of five tonight. So Sion James to the line. Freshman from Sugar Hill, Georgia. Three points today. Had that tough and one finish moments ago. And he's got the first free throw. Now he's now two for two today at the line. Back in comes Rayon Cobb, the junior from Atlanta for Grambling. Moss and McGee leave. You feel like this is a pretty big stretch here, David, for Grambling with a couple of your starters on the bench. Yeah, who's going to step up and, and take care of this offense um, it, with Moss and McGee out, out of the game? Uh, Grambling also has slowed down from that tempo that they set at the beginning of this half. Tulane now extending that pressure to force them to utilize that clock again. Edwards gets it across. Under 12 to go in the game. 12-point lead for Tulane. A miss there for Cunningham and a good rebound in traffic by the recently checked in Kevin Cross. Nearly a turnover. And Ron Hunter says, hey, let's run some clock. Know who you are. Cross leading the fast break is not what Ron Hunter wanted. You <laughs> think? <that> <laughs> Watson outside, Forbes, he'll take it, and he'll make it again. Jalen Forbes with 21. He's 5 for 7 from 3, and the lead its largest for Tulane at 15. They've created all kinds of confidence for Forbes at this point. I don't understand if you're grambling why you don't have somebody standing next to him at all times. Up and under, no, but a foul, and Terry on Randolph will get to the free throw line at the other side of this media timeout. Tulane by 15, courtesy of 14 three-pointers. Rolling here at home.
Well, we're on the basketball court today, but a big weekend upcoming for Tulane football. 2018 Kurt Cure Bowl, first bowl win since 2013 for the program. And then in 2019, back-to-back -back bowl wins, knocking off Southern Miss by 20 in the Armed Forces Bowl. And now this Tuesday, taking on Nevada in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. What a job that Willie Fritz and company have done. Willie Fritz now in his fifth season, first meeting with Nevada, third straight bowl appearance. That is a program first, and you can get it Tuesday at 2.30 on ESPN. What a job Willie Fritz has done, and what exciting times for this program and this school. And, and on both uh, the football field and in the basketball court, they, they've gotten two coaches who they believe are going to be here to build some consistent winners for these programs, and they couldn't be more excited at Tulane right now. Football, this is, this is a golden period for them, and Willie Fritz has been an outstanding coach, um, both as a man and as a recruiter for this program. He yeah, has done a great job bringing in local talent. Six and five season, they win four of their final five, coming in with momentum. And there's a couple misses at the line for Grambling, so that won't help the cause. So a 15-point Tulane lead with under 11 to go now. The Green Wave have hit 14 of 23 three-pointers. And if you're curious, the last time they made 15 in a game was all the way back in 2015. So, and this has been something else. And that was in a triple overtime game. They're going to beat that probably um, within the next two or three minutes at the pace that they've been shooting them. Yeah, January the 14th against UCF in that triple overtime thriller. Here's Prince Moss, and all of a sudden, Grambling has gone a little cold from the floor. They do get an offensive rebound, though, and reset. Tough drive, and it won't go down for Tremichael Moton, but he will head to the free throw line. Tulane in this position now. Don't give Grambling opportunities to score points with the clock stopped. Don't commit fouls that you that are, if you're going to foul, at least you're sending him to the line. That's one thing. But they have done a great job of these last couple minutes of getting Grambling out of the paint. Grambling started the second half by getting points around the rim and using it to set up the three. Those points have not been there the last two to three minutes. Sophomore from Shreveport, Moton knocks down that first free throw. He was declared eligible prior to the ULM game, made his season debut, had seven points. And he misfires on that second free throw. So a couple subs in each way, 14-point Tulane lead as we approach the midway point now with this second half. Sion James, and now Kevin Cross out there with Walker, along with McGee and Forbes. Shot clock under 10. Walker kicks and open McGee for three. That might have been partially blocked by Christian, and James fouled on the end line. Seen him sneak in for a couple of offensive rebounds. Yeah, and that's how he's figuring he can, you know, utilize that strength that he has. He is much bigger than the guards in Grambling's backcourt. He can use that physicality. But what I like there was Tulane was patient at the end of that possession. 14-point lead. Wanting to run some clock here. Walker to Forbes. He's got 21 and finally misses a three and made his last four. And that goes out of bounds. Yeah, he may want to check the basket. He's got to be surprised that something touched rim. <laughs> what a night for Jalen Forbes. 21 points, 8 of 12 floor, 5 of 8 from 3. Coming off his worst performance of the season Wednesday against Memphis where he was 3 for 13. And asked Ron Hunter about it. He said, look, he took a lot of shots that we want him taking. They didn't go down. And law of averages, right, they start to fall. If you're a good shooter, they will eventually go down if you're taking the right ones. And he's taken very good shots tonight. They've been in rhythm. They've been at the right places. And he's varied up his offensive game so that Grambling has not been able to key on one thing he's done. That's out of bounds off the hands of Cobb. And back to Tulane it goes. Yeah, Christian with a poor pass there. He knew it as soon as he let it go. Yeah, he just pointed himself. That was my mistake. Rubbed his face a little bit as if he was embarrassed. Praised Grambling the way they started this second half. Went on a little run, got to within five points, but have now turned it over four times in, what, the last four or five minutes or so. And now in a scoring drought that's run on about two and a half minutes or so. Yeah, it's not Grambling shooting that's been the problem. It's been the fact that they've turned the ball over consistently throughout this game. Valuing the basketball was such a big point 
for Coach Jackson before the game. Well done by who else? Sion James stepping in. He's done a little bit of everything today. And here's something Ron Hunter has talked about a lot too with us is look, you can be a freshman and have four points and affect the game. And he's done that. Couple of offensive rebounds, couple of charges. He's made a couple of great passes. He has three assists. That's what he can do. As long as he maintains his aggressive, aggressiveness, you're right. It doesn't have to manifest as points. You create opportunities for other folks. You play good defense. You get those second chance opportunities for your team. He's already gotten two offensive boards in this game and five rebounds total. That's one thing he's been consistent with is his rebounding all season. Two and a half minutes scoring drought for two lanes. See if they can end that with the shot clock under 10 for James and now Cross on the baseline against Cobb. Faces up and hits. Tough two there for Cross. His first field goal and the lead is 16. He's played relatively under control. You can still talk about some of his judgment calls here, but uh, a better performance for Cross than we've seen in the last couple of nights. Cobb passed up an open baseline jumper, got the rebound, and put it in with a foul. And Cross asking what he did. I think he got the hand in the cookie jar and a chance for an and one. He didn't box out. It's that simple. He didn't box out. He had two opportunities uh, on that possession to close out first on the shooter and the second to box out for that rebound. You have one man under the basket. You seal him off instead of going to reach for that ball. It's a two-lane possession instead of a three-point opportunity. So Day's back in with Watson and now Walker, McGee, and James, the five for Tulane. Cobb to the free throw line. He's three for six for the season. His first today, and he rattles it home. 13-point game, still plenty of time. Crazier things have happened in an eight-minute span in college basketball, and no one to inbound to for James has to burn a timeout. Inbounding the basketball, another area where Tulane has been working on improving. Um, you'd like to see more action there. You saw basically three guys coming towards the ball, so James had nowhere to go. Someone has to set a screen either to get someone running across or going deep. 8.04 to play. Timeout for Tulane, up 13. Looking for a win in their non-conference finale. Going on, listen up and take cover. Here comes a wolf bomb. No one else goes deeper. That's a fact. One slide, one tap. It's the ESPN app. Thirteen point lead for Tulane on Grambling, looking for a win in their non-conference finale. David Grubb, Jack Benjamin, with you. Tulane shooting forty-six percent from the floor, but fifty-two percent from three, courtesy of fourteen triples. Have them out to this big lead. Offense has gone a little quiet for both teams here in the later stages of the second half. Tulane choosing to be a little bit more deliberate, and you understand why. Uh, with eight minutes to go, you don't want to get into a panic, but also don't go away from what's been successful. Keep moving that basketball. Watson on the curl, turned aside by Moss in transition. Christian to lay it in. Beautifully done, and that's what Tulane wanted to prevent Grambling from doing. Finally, they get out and run, and Christian has 13 points. Ten of those here to second half. He's been much more aggressive and found himself in the flow of the game. And Tulane, yeah, live ball turnovers, such a big problem for them, and Graham being able to convert. Tulane won for its last seven. This Grambling team can get on a run. Exploded for a few huge runs against ULM in the win Wednesday. Watson kicks, Jordan Walker triple, late clock no. And Prince Moss has another rebound, his fourth. Can make it single digits now. And the difference that I'm seeing here for Tulane's offense is, one, they're driving into the basketball, but it doesn't seem that they're driving to complete. They're driving to look for the three, and you're only getting one pass. You're not getting movement from one side of the, the uh, court to the other. Tulane has to get more players involved offensively. Moton double dribbled. That's a tough turnover to take if you're Dante Jackson and Grambling. And we'll take a timeout here. 6.36 to go, Tulane holding on, up by 11. What a day it's been for Jalen Forbes. 21 points, a career high, a big reason why Tulane is up 11 late in the second half. 
Yeah, he's got a career high 21 points. He's also made five threes, all matching, uh, setting another career high. He's been the engine for Tulane, not just in making shots, but his effort, his aggression, his put the ball on the floor, and he's just been their steadiest player all game long. Transfer from Alabama. It's taken him a little bit of time to find his footing, but having scored already in double figures at five of the six games this season, four-star guy out of high school, you knew the talent was there. And for Ron Hunter, always talks about like it was a matter of time for him, and he has blossomed. It's so important. All these guys come out of school, and they were the best player on their school, the best player in their city, the best player potentially in their state. And it's humbling to come on to college basketball at times. And finding the right fit is such a big guess. And so for him to find a home and find a place and a coach that feels confident in him is going to develop him into his best uh, self as a basketball player, that's what every player is looking for is a home. I mean, uh, Grambling hanging around still. More than six minutes left, down by 11. Plenty of firepower on this team offensively. They've made 7 of 14 from three. The question is, can they stop turning the ball over and actually get shots up? Cunningham, and now Christian, who will be the guy down the stretch. That time it's Cobb, and he misses. Cobb has not done much well today. Um, but and, and that's I'm a little surprised right now because Grambling did have that success going inside early. The game is still relatively close. I'm surprised they haven't brought back one of those bigs to try to take advantage. Two and a half minutes scoring drought for Tulane. Extra pass, James on the baseline. Tough pass there, and that's going back to Grambling. That's the wrong guy at the wrong time. You're not going to drop that bounce pass into three, in between three Grambling defenders to Noble Days. He needs the ball a little bit higher if he's going to convert. Nice thought, but just, again, wrong time, wrong place. Both teams now with scoring droughts that have surpassed two minutes. Cam Christian tries to end that and does with a deep three and grambling right back in it down by eight. It took that one a while to get there, but uh, he splashed it, you know, great four, but it seemed like that shot had some tremendous backspin that slowed it up in the air. Had a dead ball foul afterward. And now Ron Hunter's going to bring back in Kevin Cross. And we talked about it. You let this Grambling team hang around. They're capable. They have plenty of shot makers. Christian, we've seen. We know what Moss can do. And they can get back at you with a big run in a hurry. And they've shown that. Here they are with an 8-0 eight, eight -oh run. And you see yeah, Cross going back on the floor uh, for Tulane. And there's another timeout burned by Tulane. Now they're down to one with 5.11 to go and having a lot of trouble inbounding against the pressure. That has been a point of emphasis for the Green Wave since game one is working on those inbound situations. They have to get better at these as they get into conference play. But as you said, Grambling has done everything to build their confidence right here. Eight-point deficit, a lot of time left to play. And with Tulane turning the basketball and going through these one-and-done possessions, they're giving Grambling an opportunity to just walk them down. Tulane has to make a stand here. So if you're Ron Hunter, what are you telling your team about not only breaking the pressure, but also on this offensive set? Once you've broken the pressure, attack the basket. Once you've done that, don't pull it back out and do this one pass dribble. You don't have to use the clock fully to have a good offensive possession. And I think that's what guys are thinking about too much right now. Now Dante Jackson can't believe that they called a foul there. That's a matter of spacing. And it becomes team foul number, that should be number six, I believe. So still one away from the bonus for Tulane. Now let's see if there's any screen or someone releasing deep. No one wants the ball right now. McGee comes back to it and finally into the hands of Walker. Dangerous pass here, finds Cross. Hectic sequence, Cross inside, and he gets bumped and fouled. Yeah, once he got that inside position, he had the baseline for his, his, himself to attack. Go, just go, make them defend you. You beat the press, and if there's no one in front of you, as there was for Cross, make them defend, and he gets to the line. He gets rewarded for his effort. So a chance for Tulane to end this 8-0 grambling run at the free throw line. 
a scoring drought that has reached three minutes and 23 seconds. Kevin Cross today has three points. He's played with four fouls, so limited minutes. And rolls around that first free throw. Came in eight for 10 this season. And he's now two for three tonight. Cross has just, he has a, a lot of ability. Putting it together mentally has, has been an issue for him. You understand he did, he's a tr another transfer, a guy with limited opportunities this offseason to train with these this Tulane team. But they need him to find himself within the scope of this roster and be a, a regular contributor. 10-point game, left wide open, Moton, and he buries a three. Another defensive breakdown, it's down to seven with 4.45 to go. Cross now trying to break pressure by himself and does so. But where is the help? Somebody should be coming back to get that ball from him. Cross down the lane and hacks. Cobb having a tough time staying with him. Cobb's had a tough time on both ends of the floor all game long. And, and if you, that can't be what Coach Jackson wants is a free lane to the rim for uh, Kevin Cross in that situation. Well, that's the advantage of having a versatile big like Cross. He brings the ball across, breaks pressure, and now a chance for a couple more free throws. And he's got three in a row now. Sophomore from Little Rock, mentioned it earlier, at the career high in his year at Nebraska last year in the Big Ten first-round matchup with Indiana, 23 points, nine rebounds. He, he seems to play biggest under the bright lights. Had 17 in a game at Michigan. Also at Wisconsin, he played well. So uh, something about those big moments, like the Memphis game Wednesday where he shines brightest. And the key for him is decision-making. I think they're looking for blood on his jersey, by the way, too. And we know what that means. Is you got to go to the sideline there. But what Grambling needed to do in that situation is force him to be a decision maker. He didn't have to make a decision when he sees a path straight to the basket. They needed to provide someone enough, some help, force the ball out of his hands, and make him throw a cross-court pass, make him throw, do something off the dribble instead of going in a straight line. That was just a mistake by that Grambling defense as they try to close this gap, and they're running out of time to do so. Again, to reset this one for you, Jack Benjamin, David Grubb with you. 4.37 left. Non-conference finale for Tulane. They've got East Carolina to resume American play Tuesday in Greenville, and then they'll head over to Orlando to take on UCF. Grambling has been on the road all but one game in non-conference play. Played a home game against East Texas Baptist, but they've been challenged in environments like Lubbock at number 14 Texas Tech in Tucson, and now putting up a fight here in New Orleans against a very good Tulane team at least so far this year at 4-1. and one. Cross knocks down that free throw. It's back to nine. What's interesting is <laughs> Grambling refuses to go away. They feel they have to feel like there's still a, a great chance of them pulling this game out. They're getting good looks from three. Tulane put some pressure on them there, but when they've gotten the ball in the live ball situations, that's what hurts. When you come off the free throw, Tulane is able to set their defense Grambling has to defend without fouling and create some up-tempo. So Tulane returns the, returns the favor with a nice trap. And it's a nine-point lead. We'll step away here. 4.30 to go. Tulane up nine. Looking to close this one out and finish non-conference play 5-0 and here at home. I can't hear. Back in New Orleans, nine-point lead for Tulane. A look at their upcoming schedule. So they resume conference play in Greenville at East Carolina on Tuesday, eight days off after Christmas, Central Florida, and then East Carolina again. So two games against the Pirates in an 11-day span. And that'll be a challenge for Tulane. But also you, you, you kind of like that, I think, this season to get those familiar games Right out of the way, really quickly. You don't have the other team doesn't have a lot of time to adjust to you. Same with them. Bad turnover there for Grambling. Down nine. That felt like a huge possession. Try to creep a little bit closer, and all of a sudden, Tulane with a chance to build it back to double digits. So, an important game here, right? Your non-conference finale. You're at home. You're about to embark on a couple tough road games in conference play. You want all the momentum you can get, and of course, want to protect home court. Here's Cross into the paint. Spins, working hard, but good contest that time by Cobb. And across, lucky he didn't get a fifth foul there. 
Yeah. That Down was the lane goes Cunningham, and he's fouled. Clear frustration by Cross. Um, tried to do a little too much spin move off the glass, and then uh, could have been called for it over the back there. But Gramlin comes back in transition. Again, a one-and-done possession for Tulane. Come back in transition, get fouled, go to the free throw line, and try to close this lead while the clock is not moving. Travell Cunningham at the line for a one-and-one. One. This has been a problem spot all season for Grambling, the free throw line. 64% coming in. They're 6 for 10 today. And right on cue, he contradicts that and buries the free throw. Cunningham's their senior leader. Native of Chicago. He's spent time at three different schools. Trinidad State to start his career. Triton Community College. He's got both. It's a seven-point game, and there's a foul before the ball got inbounded. A huge mental error for Grambling there. Yeah, you can't afford that. A couple of tough possessions, right? The turnover and then that. And Walker gets an automatic couple. A one and one bigger pardon. But especially if you're Grambling, your pressure has worked so well. No need to reach. Not at all. I mean, Tulane has shown you that over the last several minutes, they either can't make a shot they're turning it over, or they're not getting a second shot. So play your game. You don't need to reach. Tulane has given you enough opportunities to get back. You just have to capitalize. Been very impressed by this Grambling team. Hanging around. No run has been too much for them. They're down by seven, despite struggles at time turning the ball over. They've got 15 turnovers today to Tulane's four. Walker one and one. And drops it through. Richard Jr. out of Port Washington, New York. The nickname of Jelly, part of the Jelly fam. <laughs> and we saw a couple of those against Memphis, some Jelly finishes. Not one tonight, but uh, any, an important miss there for a, a Grambling. Tulane only leading nine, by eight. Eight-point game, a basket here. It's back to two possessions. A three by Christian rimmed it out. Great look. That this spin didn't go. is so interesting. It is not a normal spin when it comes off his hand. It is like a sidewinding knuckleball almost. And we roll under three and a half to play here in New Orleans. And Grantley doesn't have to overpressure. Is that, they called a foul there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, another reach. And this one goes against Tremichael Moton. And it's the last thing you want if you're grambling. You've played good defense here down the stretch. Well, I, I would understand if Coach Jackson has a beef with the last two calls uh, or in a non-call. You, you go back to the cross play where there was a, a non-call that could have been a foul. And then you look at that one and you say that's a tic-tac if you're Coach Jackson, especially in a game like this that's so close. These are fouls that can swing the game one way or another. I understand his frustration, but his team has to be more disciplined. You can't give the refs an opportunity to make that call. Two free throws for Walker, who's up to nine points. It's been a tough day from the field, only two for nine, but three for four from the stripe. And the lead back to double digits for Tulane, so a big swing there when it could have been back to two possessions. Prince Moss, haven't said his name a whole lot since halftime. Inside Cobb, working on days no, and James wants to run with Watson, who will slow it down wisely. And there's that junior veteran presence. Gets a step on Moton, throws it up toward Days, and too much. And this is what Coach Hunter is saying is, that what was the risk for there? Why the lob? That was one that could have been a bounce pass there. He had plenty of room, and you cannot uh, take chances like that in this game right now. Cobb thought about a three. A couple of pump fakes, and he's fouled by Days. And that means free throws upcoming for Grambling. It'll be a one and one. Two mistakes on that one for Tulane defensively. Number one, know who you're defending. And Cobb was not going to shoot that three. He's taken one three all season. So why are you jumping on that? He pumps fakes, he gets in, and then Days gives him the body to send him to the line. This has not been a game for Cobb where he's shown that he can be an effective scorer. Make these guys make shots. So Tulane with some mental errors on that possession. Cobb out of National Park College in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Spent a year there and averaged pretty much a double-double, 14-9. and nine. Free throw is good. He came in today three for six at the line. 
He's now two for two today. And again, Grambling hanging around. Can make it eight with a free throw here and can expect some pressure, I think, if you're Tulane. And there's, and there's the, the long, long pass. Lead. Walker in transition glides to the bucket to lay it in. I've been waiting for that. With Grambling continuing to pack it in at the baseline, you had that chance, and uh, Gabe Watson took care of, I mean, uh, excuse me, Jordan Walker took advantage. On the other side, good answer from Moton to draw a foul. Now, this is what you do if you're Grambling, right? Stop the clock any chance you can, get points. And maybe start weakening that two-lane lineup by getting someone into foul trouble. That's a great point. Crosses four fouls, a couple others with three. Free throw up and in for Moton. So Moton has been nice off the bench, five points. He's played about 20 minutes. Yeah, here knocks, comes down pressure. Yeah, knocks down both free throws. It's back to eight again. And this time Moss played a little bit of a safety role to make sure. There's a foul on Moss in the backcourt on James. I don't know I don't the thinking that. there. You're yeah. double bonus and you're fouling one of the better free throw shooters on the two-lane team. I didn't understand that decision at all. At 2.24 left, Ron Hunter yeah, it's talking three. it over with the officials. James converts. You had it at a three-possession game, but still with plenty of time. I just don't understand that, that, that decision there to try to do a reach um, behind to go for the steal. And right in front of the refs at that. Tulane's done a nice job in the second half at the line. 10 for 12, make it 11 for 13 as James gets the roll. He's 4 for 5 himself. And again, it's 10 points with 2.20 to go. Cunningham without a field goal. This is Moton against Forbes. And now Cobb against Days. Double team comes. Tough three, no. Off the hands of Moton and Forbes with another rebound. Six rebounds to go with his game-high 21 points. So now the key for Tulane is, you know, you're getting to that situation under two minutes where you can get to the free throw line. You're going to have to make free throws down the stretch. Gabe Watson off the screen from Forbes. Left open, elbow J, and he's fouled. Yeah, Christian really got turned around there. Lost Watson completely which gave him the space to get into the lane. I'm still surprised he took the pull-up jumper. A little bit of contact on that shot. Looks like Cobb got him on that right shooting arm, so Watson to the line. 16 points, make it 17. That was his first free throw. Shot at 73.5% at Southern Miss last year as a sophomore, native of Jackson, Mississippi. Ron Hunter talked about it prior to the Memphis game. Only a matter of time before he breaks out. 18 points Wednesday, 18 more today. And the lead a dozen for Tulane. Maybe the finishing touches. And then those five assists and two steals as well. So doing it in all phases for the Green Wave. Down the lane. And an offensive foul on Moton. Days with his second charge taken of the game. Are you charting over there? <laughs> I know. I know you're. I know you're a big fan of the charge. <laughs> it's just that's what he does. He he does the dirty work, and every team needs that guy. He's that guy for the Green Wave. Such an incredible kid, too. A Racine, Wisconsin native. He's actually familiar with a few of these Grambling players. Played some AAU ball with a couple of them few Wisconsin natives because of the roots of their head coach Dante Jackson so final 80 seconds now here at Fogelman in, Del in uh, Devlin 12 point Tulane lead just running some clock now and it's under 8 this is Walker scoops a pass through the hands of James you saw James take his eyes off the pass before he caught it. He was looking to swing the ball immediately on the catch. That's part of that hesitancy for him as a shooter. He could have caught that ball. He didn't have to shoot it, but he was already looking to get rid of it. And I think that's what Coach Hunter was telling him is just catch the ball. We don't need you to do anything fancy right now. There's just a minute to go. So Watson out, McGee back in. Grambling needs to get going and quick. 
They were at a field goal their last 3.53, so a drought at a pretty inopportune time here for the Tigers. Moton I can't remember when up. either team made a basket yeah, last. Moton picked up his dribble. And a nice block inside by Cross. Nearly got another one. Good contest against Edwards. No. Good rebound in traffic by Cross. And then he was called for a travel. Can't believe it either. Back to Grambling it goes with 44 seconds to go. Surprising decision by Grambling there as well. After you get that off as a rebound, that's an opportunity for an open three. And that's what you need right now to get back in this game down 12. You need some threes in, a, in rapid succession. Moton to trigger. Again, down by 12. It's Moss. Had 14 in the first half, just four here in the second. Shot clock down to 10. There's a turnover, and that'll just about do it with 34.2 left. And that's ultimately it's going to be what does Grambling in. You can look at a bunch of stats in this game, David, but at the end of the day, you turn it over 16 times, your opponent just seven, and you won't win many of those contests. No, because Grambling did everything else. If you look at it on paper, they did what they should, have, should do to win. Shoot the ball almost 50%. Shot at 50 from three. That made their free throws. Rebounded the ball fairly well, but turning it over is going to get you every time. That's a good point. They're out rebounding Tulane by two in this game, and ultimately they'll come up a little bit short here. Only right that Jalen Forbes can dribble it out. There is about a, a three, four second game clock, shot clock difference, but looks like Tulane will be pretty content here. A couple of claps from this crowd, which, of course, due to the circumstances, is a little bit less than it would be. If they were cheering on their team right now, you'd figure there'd be a whole lot of excitement about a group that's going to move to 5-1 and one and head over to Greenville with some momentum as they try to get back to 500 in conference play. Three-pointer from Cunningham. Nope. And that will do it. Well done by Tulane. They bounce back from the conference opening loss to Memphis on Wednesday. An impressive eight-point, making a 12-point win over Grambling here today. Just a, a good bounce back performance for Tulane, particularly shooting the basketball. Some things to work on defensively uh, before you get uh, to, to Greenville. But if this is the offense that they can find where they're moving the ball to multiple people, creating open shots, that's going to be a huge development for this team as they go forward. Tulane knocks down 14 threes a season high, and they win it by 12. So for David Grubb, Jack Benjamin sing so long from Avron B. Fogelman Arena in the Devlin Fieldhouse. Final score, 77-65 Tulane over Grambling. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.